It's the 18th of July 2022 and Chinese tanks are rolling down the streets of Henan. Videos appear to show protesters in panic. Very quickly, social media and parts of the mainstream media are awash with claims that the tanks have been deployed to protect the banks from protesters whose bank accounts have been frozen. Comparisons are immediately made with Tiananmen Square. A few days later, Associated Press assessed the Henan video and said that the global claims about the video were false, that the footage was captured 248 miles away from Henan, and that the video depicts an annual military exercise unrelated to the bank protests. However, due to reports coming out of China, it does appear that there were actual protesters gathered in Henan, only to be met with violence from the local police force. Now, regardless of the legitimacy of the videos and where the truth sits in these recent events, what the viral videos did was intensify speculation on the current Chinese banking crisis, which is currently reaching boiling point. The Henan incident and similar protests around China raise many questions. What will happen to the Chinese economy? Will it collapse? What will it mean for the global economy? Will all of this trigger a global recession? All of these questions are incredibly difficult to answer and I'm certainly not a finance guy, so I'm not going to be making any bold claims about the Chinese economy collapsing in 14 days and 24 minutes. History tells us though that global recessions happen on average every 10 to 20 years and since 1870 there have been 14 global economic collapses. So we are indeed in a time frame for another recession and given the economic impact of the pandemic then you wouldn't bet against another economic collapse in the near future. And you certainly wouldn't bet against the next recession being far more potent than many of its predecessors. Now I'm an optimist and not someone who dwells on doom and gloom, so while we will cover the background to the Chinese economic problems and even speculate when its economy may collapse, I will do so to give context. It will be in the context and backdrop of what I believe is a far more critical question. What opportunities exist for the rest of the world if China's economy continues to struggle or ultimately if it does indeed crash? How does Beijing and their leader in Beijing, how does he look within giving the grim data of the day? Retail sales, industrial output, investment all slowed and missed estimates. Youth unemployment hitting a record high, home sales falling more than 28% year over year. It's clear that the economic model that drove China's world beating growth over the last two decades or more is running out of road. Like many countries around the world, China's middle classes invest in real estate. The problem for China though is that real estate accounts for approximately 24% of China's gross domestic product. And this can make them vulnerable during times of economic downturn. To give some context, real estates in the US contribute to around 15-18% to of the country's GDP and many other Western countries have similar numbers. China's economy and real estate markets have boomed since 1998, but so too has its debt. The Chinese government knew this couldn't continue unchecked and in 2020 introduced the Three Red Lines policy. The Three Red Lines policy was simply a strategy to reduce risk in the Chinese real estate market. Unfortunately for China, this policy has largely been ineffective and in 2021, China's second largest property developer, China Evergrande, defaulted on its interest payments and nearly crashed the entire market. A bad start to 2022 for China's Evergrande. The troubled property developer has suspended trading in its shares on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. A huge part of the appeal of investing in any Chinese company is the belief that the government is going to bail out any prominent player if things go wrong. Of course, we had those concerns about demand when it comes to the markets and a lot to do with what's happening in China, specifically with Evergrande in the property market. Fast forward to where we are in 2022 and the economic situation in China has worsened. 
house prices have fallen, construction has slowed, homeowner loans have been reduced, and consumer confidence in the market and system is lacking. What is particularly interesting is that when the protests were erupting across China, the market actually showed signs of improved stability. China is now in a perfect storm where its economy is under significant stress, driven by low consumer confidence, the global economic downturn caused by the pandemic, and in part also due to China's stance on the Russian-Ukraine war. As you would expect, being the second largest economy in the world, China is causing global anxiety over its domestic issues and the interconnectedness of its banks and the global financial systems. The protests we saw in Henan look to be the tip of the iceberg. Due to real estate issues, over 40 billion yuan went missing from bank deposits. Back in April, four other rural banks had to notify people that their bank accounts had been frozen and that they could not access their money. And this is all playing out against the backdrop of one of the most extensive banking Ponzi schemes we have ever seen. The scam is estimated to have cost the Chinese economy around $9 million. So essentially, a real estate developer takes funding to start building properties. But what they were doing is, before they were completing construction, they were using these part-made properties as collateral to get more funding to build more real estate properties. And this cycle has been going on for many years, and unbelievably, this method of finance has built over 85% of the houses constructed in China. As a result, many of these real estate developers do not have excellent cash flow, and it often takes them many months or even many years to finish construction. And in many situations, construction was actually never completed. This is why you may have seen images plastered over the news of empty buildings scattered all over China. This has resulted in people boycotting over 300 unfinished projects in over 90 different cities, and the protesters are demanding the banks give them back their house deposits. Astoundingly, many of these people have been paying mortgages on properties that have never been completed. This problem has spiralled, and as a result, demand for new houses has dropped to 16.9%, the lowest level it has been for the last six years. Home sales have also fallen by a quarter of where they were just 12 months ago. As you would expect, America has been very vocal about having open investigations to find out what went wrong, as clearly this affects the entire global economy. Unbelievably, mainland China and Hong Kong are the only two jurisdictions worldwide that don't allow inspections by the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board, as officials have claimed national security and confidentiality concerns. And whether you believe them or not, many of China's banks say that the real estate market risks are controllable. President Xi Jinping, his government and authorities have tried to reassure citizens that they would be compensated and stricter controls would be placed upon the banking sector. So this is where we are currently at. The world is watching anxiously, and obviously for China's rogue property developers, banks and its people, this is terrible news, as well as for international businesses who want to make money from Chinese customers. But ever the optimist I am, I have been doing a lot of research, and for the global economy, I think that what is happening in China may actually have an upside. So just think about it this way. China is one of the largest manufacturing hubs in the world, and every year it imports billions and billions of tons of raw materials to make things that it then sells back to the world. As a result of the economic crisis, China is currently importing fewer raw materials, and the net positive effect of all of this is that inflatory pressures are reduced in the rest of the world. When China buys a lot, prices go up because demand is high. When China reduces its imports, the prices go down. And let me give you specific examples here. Before China's recent real estate issues, it's imported around two-thirds of the world's iron and metallurgical coal, and around 40% of the world's copper. Like I was saying before, if there is lower demand, you will generally see lower prices. 
So compared to world peaks in the summer of 2021, when the world started easing restrictions, the cost of iron is approximately 50% lower, metallurgical coal has reduced by a third, and the global copper prices have dropped by a quarter. The housing problems, and also in part, the additional Chinese mandatory COVID restrictions, are also starting to have an effect on global energy supplies. China is now processing 10% less crude oil than in April 2022, since the demand for petrol has declined. Electricity consumption in the country is now just growing at a rate of 2% annually, to a pre-pandemic growth rate of 7% per year. So it could be said that China's real estate crisis is a counterbalance to the world's global energy supply challenges and strains caused by Russia's invasion in Ukraine. Now, while I'm absolutely not saying the Chinese problems are fixing the world's economic and energy supply issues, because clearly they're absolutely not, I am simply saying it's just helping a little. Over the last 20 years, due to China's meteoric growth, there has also been a significant imbalance between China's large world exports and its relatively low imports of Western goods. Many see this as a drag on the global economy and depriving other workers worldwide of earning the type of income they would have made if China had never become the world's manufacturing hub. So will the Chinese economy collapse? Will it cause a global recession? And how bad will it potentially get? These are all unknowns and I'm not going to speculate on all of this other than to say recessions come every few years. Hence why we are probably not a million miles from the next. Everyone is starting to struggle and we are all feeling the pinch. Many countries are seeing record inflation levels and commodity shortages. And while I will certainly not wish ill on any other country or people, China's current problems may just enable the rest of the world to catch its breath after the two worst years to be experienced in a generation.